before your meeting in the cemetery. I don't, I don't have, have to tell, tell you, you anything. 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 Welcome everybody, welcome everybody. Sally sells seashells. All right, we're good. Five, four, three. Hey everybody, table wobble. Hey everybody, Eric with uh, Biz Talk the show. Where this is technically, I don't know, like episode five. Or maybe we'll just run them all together into one episode because that's how we're gonna run this show, just like a nightmare of a mess, right? <laughs> so just whatever happens, happens. Um, I am here with uh, a small business, technically a small business operator that I think a lot of times uh, when we think of small business, we think a lot of sticks and bricks uh, and, and you know, like this, this service product at the end, there's something, there's, a, there's donuts or there's artwork or there's some kind of, um, you know, this result that um, is, it feels a little bit more tangible or is more tangible, we can hold it. And a lot of times when we think about business, we don't think about how many business owners are out there that are providing this, um, this service uh, and we don't necessarily even think like, oh, that's a business owner. Right away we think that's a doctor, right? We don't see it as a business owner, you know. Um, I am here with uh, Dr. Laura Depko. Yes, technically not a doctor. Okay. Um, licensed clinical social worker. Okay, for legal purposes, <laughs> yes, licensed clinical social worker. But for purposes of like my mental state of mm -hmm. mind, doctor. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, I, uh, I got connected with you through a mutual friend, mm -hmm. a colleague of yours, uh, Andrew, um, because I was looking to speak to somebody, bring somebody into this. Um, what we're doing, our operation as far as uh, connecting with small businesses, uh, to talk about like the mental health of entrepreneurs because I think just me myself, I know um, I overlook it. Sure. Right, but before we jump into that, uh, let's talk about a little bit what you do and um, how people could get in touch with you and then we could jump into uh, how messed up I already am. <laughs> sure, so um, yeah, my business is Depco Cognitive Therapy. I run it out of Red Bank, uh, but this day and age, obviously, it's, it could be virtual, so um, that's a beautiful thing. I can see people from all over the state and actually I'm licensed in 15 different states, okay. which is great. Uh, I target specifically anxiety, insomnia, and mental performance which is a really exciting area and they all kind of mesh together at some point. Right, right. I mean, I think I've hit every beat. Yeah. Um, definitely the insomnia part, right? <laughs> um, so, uh, and how long have you been doing that? I started my business in 2019. 2019. So you started like literally the pandemic was about to be like, hey, I'm here and I'm going to make everybody suffer. Mm -hmm. And that was it. You just like <laughs> launched on the beginning of all of that. Yeah, I did a slow roll, which I think is, is smart when you're going out on your own. I, w I had a full-time job and I was building up my practice. Right. And then right. once my practice could sustain itself, then I made the leap. Right. So, um, yeah, before we jump into the, the mental health of small business owners, <laughs> that's a, we might need like two hour movie for that, right? <laughs> so <laughs> so much, over so there much, like, yeah, so Lauren's like, yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, you, you said, and that, that's, a, that's a common theme, is like everybody that we've talked to, it's always like trial by fire, we took a risk, you know, um, we made these, some of us made the steps, some of us just were like both feet. You made, you took steps to secure your position. So talk to me about um, why that's important as a small business owner to do something like that. I think when it comes to starting your own business, there is a lot of stress and a lot of doubt right. associated with it. So if you're slow rolling it um, intentionally and step by step and really building from the foundation up, I think you can end up alleviating some of the stress on the back end. Well, you have an inside track, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, clearly you know things we don't. <laughs> 
So, um, and uh, do you feel like that was, uh, you know, moving in that slow roll, being deliberate, um, and, and sort of baby stepping it, for lack of a better term, into the full time career jump? Um, do you think that made you uh, more, less stressed, more successful, or more focused? Like, what did that do for you specifically? I think it allowed me to focus more on building my brand, what I wanted it to look like, where I wanted to have my feet and my specialties. And while I was doing that and marketing myself, those are all things they don't train you in social work school, right? Like that's, that's the downside of being a, a therapist in the small business world is they don't really give you training for that. <laughs> so I think that that time allowed me also to, to learn the business aspect of things and what was going to be best for me long term. Um, so that by the time I made the jump, I was firing on all cylinders right. and it, it didn't feel like it missed a beat at all. Right, right. Okay, yeah, well, I mean, and I think that's a solid piece of advice for people. Um, you know, entrepreneurs were all sort of our own breed, like you, and you know this, um, you know, did you have any uh, idea that you wanted to strike out ultimately on your own as an independent entrepreneur, independent business owner? Did you have a different trajectory when you started your career path? Yes, I did. When I started my career path, I saw myself being in a school forever. Um, so I did what I needed to do to get into a school. And then I felt like I was boxed in oh, yeah. and I wasn't able to grow clinically. I wasn't able to grow financially, obviously. Um, so then I, I shifted and, and while that was happening, and I know small business owners struggle sometimes with this too, um, imposter syndrome was really big for me at the start of my career path. And while I was starting to feel boxed in, I started to realize like, Oh, I'm really good at what I do. Like, I don't need to stay here in this box. Like, I can get outside and I could just have unlimited opportunities. So it was a really beautiful transition that happened from going from being so doubtful to being so confident and being able to make it out there on my own. Okay. And I think that imposter syndrome is a good segue into talking about entrepreneurial mental health. So for those people who don't know what that is, define imposter syndrome for them. Imposter syndrome is really when you break it down, it's doubt. It's doubting your abilities, doubting where you're at, um, feeling like you're a phony and other people are going to be able to tell. Um, and, and I think underneath it might be even a fear of failure. Now, that, is that the same as fake it till you make it? Or is that something different, would you say? Oh, that's a good question. I think, I think fake it to the make it is a good strategy to get through imposter syndrome. Okay. But I wouldn't necessarily say they're the same. Okay. All right. And then that, that jumps right into, you know, again, I just see it's something we don't take care of. My experience as a business owner, my experience talking to other business owners, we never take our mental health into account. We're always taking care of our client, our brand, mm -hmm. our mission, our employees, our whatever. It's always everybody else. The, our, our businesses actually become our children. Yeah. And we're taking care of our children and we're never pausing long enough to take care of us. And I will say this, from my experience, it's if I didn't have my bike to get out there and you know ride like four days a week, mm -hmm. um, I'd kill somebody. Oh yeah. <laughs> I would choke somebody. I would literally be Michael Myers, you know, like it would be Halloween every day if I didn't do that. Um, and, and, and you know, that's sort of my mental break. I, I call it mental floss. Mm -hmm. totally I like that. that. You know, that's my mental floss in the day. Um, but I know that it's not always 100%. You know, it's, it's because when I'm riding the bike, I'm still thinking, I'm clearing my head and yeah. able to focus, but I'm still like, there's, there's things going through my mind and sometimes business creeps in. So sure. let's talk about the mental health of the entrepreneur and you know, why it's important. Yeah, well, it's funny you say mental floss because there's an analogy I love using with people and it's equating our dental hygiene with our mental hygiene, okay. right? Everyone brushes, or everyone should be brushing their teeth twice a day, every day, period. You don't wait until your teeth hurt. You don't wait until your appointment with the dentist is coming up because we know <laughs> our mouths would look busted. <laughs> so really, like mental skills are the same way, right? And, and we're talking 
it could be as little as five minutes to do a little meditation, centering yourself. Exercise is an awesome stress management tool too. Um, when you said floss, I just wanted to, yeah, to add sure. that I in there. I, now I, I have a question you asked. <laughs> It's all about the dental, uh, mental height, dental, mental, uh, oh, we're on something. Go, yes. <laughs> we're going to have some dentists be like texting us, hey, can we get in on this? <laughs> so um, the question again was, you know, how do, how do we deal with that? Because again, you know, as entrepreneurs, we are taking care of, often taking care of, I'm over here right now. It should know better. Cleared the airspace. Yeah, they should have cleared the airspace. So, so for example, what I often say to people when they are they're sick or they're frustrated, I'm like, you're no good to me if you aren't a hundred percent because you're not giving me a hundred percent. Yeah. You know, and I think as a business owner, myself, I know I'm no good to anybody on my team, my clients, if I'm not a hundred percent. But guess what? Because I'm taking care of everybody else. I'm often, for, if I, again, if it wasn't for the bike riding, mm -hmm. I'm definitely not going to be 100% if I'm stressed, if I'm pissed, if I'm frustrated, I'm overworked, and I'm not taking care of me yeah. in some way. Um, so the question really is, is like, what do we do? Like, and again, you know, what would you do? What would you suggest and why would you suggest it? Yeah. Um, as I mentioned and you mentioned, exercise is huge. I think get physically releasing that stress and tension that tends to build when you have your business on your shoulders. Um, you could, I mean, you're living the dream being a small business owner, but at the end of the day, it is stressful. It's, it's all on you to, um, to make it work. So a big fan of exercise, also a big fan of just centering yourself in the morning. For me, that's, that looks like stretching. Okay. I just stretch on the floor for a few minutes in the quiet. Don't talk to me. <laughs> um, I think too, if, if, you're able to get a separating a business and a personal phone line is really important. So you're able to literally turn it off because if <laughs> I know I, I, I'm, I don't do that all myself. We're talking like optimal world, right? Because um, you can always be working. Yes. And I think that's the trap we fall into is you can literally be working from the time you wake up and your ideas start flowing and you're on the phone, you're checking the email, you're checking in with your employees and you could be working all the way until the time you go to bed and that's just not healthy. All right, so how many, come on, be honest. Yeah, me, that's me, you, you, yeah, see? See, definitely. And I think, you know, there's the argument on the one side of, you know, I, I have to be doing this to, to continue to build my business or to keep my business flowing. Um, but really, if you're turning your phone or your laptop off at 8 p.m. and booting it back up at 9 in the morning or whatever, are you really missing that much? And I think the peace of mind and the relaxation that can be gained from literally turning off the business part of your mind um, has massive benefits. Yeah, I, and, and I, I definitely, I mean, I started, I think it was this year. I started trying to wind down by 10 o'clock. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not always successful, but I started to try to be like, okay, here's 10 o'clock. I need to be away from this. I need to just, you know, let me watch some dumb horror movie or, you know what I mean? And let not even do, and I'm just trying now, but I'm like, okay, no, I can't check the business's social media right now. Let me just yeah. decompress. And while I'm not, I'm not always successful. That's, that's the reality of it. I'm not, Yeah. you know, it's cause my habits and I know it's the habits of every entrepreneur. These are habits we created in our journey. Mm -hmm. Absolutely created these habits in our journey. Some of them were like um, an oh shit moment where we had like, oh my God, I got to do this. Yeah. And then just kept going. And some of it was just maybe who we are. You know, so some learn, some who we are, but they're definitely habits and um, it's hard to break them. Oh, for sure. For sure. And I mean, there's the... And I like separating the phones because then I can literally turn off the business phone and anything that needs to be catered to, I can. When I have the oh shit moments, like I need to do something, I actually like will just text my business phone from my personal phone <laughs> and I'll get to idea. it tomorrow. Um, you know, so like it, there's a piece of boundaries there that's really important. Um, so that's, that's one thing I really like. Um, and that folds into the importance of sleep. Um, I like to think of our bodies as a phone battery. 
and if we're able to get good sleep and if we're feeding our bodies, uh, then we're m best case scenario can start the day at 100%. If we're not getting good sleep and if we're not fueling our bodies appropriately, you're not going to start your day at 100%. You're going to start your day at maybe 50%. Um, and then you die pretty quickly. And so I, I really love making that analogy because I think everyone can identify with it. I do a, a talk where I ask people, you know, what are the ways in which you make sure your phone battery doesn't die during the day? And everybody raises their hand. They got, you know, 10 different strategies for keeping their phone alive until they get <laughs> home at the end of the day. And then I switch it and I say, okay, how do you charge your body battery during the day and make sure that you're staying fully charged and at your best self the whole day? And then they're just, their faces <laughs> go blank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we don't think about it no no you're right we don't think about it and i mean that's that's again why i i really was excited to be able to talk to you because we don't think about it mm -hmm. like and honestly i don't i have not seen one business show one event none of that where people are where where any because all these events are all about Let's make this network connection. Let's do that network connection. All these talk shows and everything else are about, hey, what's your business and what's your advice? I mean, we're guilty of it right now doing this, like what's your advice, right? What's your business? But it was really important that I was able to talk to you and bring you on because, um, you know, that's the thing. Like we as business owners say we don't have enough time in the day yes. to get everything done. Yeah. But if we drop freaking dead, then what was the point, mm -hmm. right? We, ne we, never saw the, we never saw the success because this, you know, we're in the hospital with a heart attack at 45. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so and there, there's always gonna be stuff to do. Yeah. Whether are. you take the break or not, there's always stuff on your to-do list, so might as well cater to your sanity. Yeah. Um, hey, I'm taking tomorrow off. Nice, nice. And that looks different for everybody, you know? Um, monthly massages. Um, Getting out, if you're, if you're at the house or in the office all day, getting out, get some fresh air, go, go out for, for lunch, go for a walk. Yeah, yeah just breaking, breaking up the monotony and, and changing up your surroundings. Um, uh, nature is beautiful, get to the water, I'm a big fan of that too. <laughs> yeah, so uh, the other thing, so let's say, I mean, it's another thing, like people right away, they'll go to, they'll go to a therapist, a psychologist, a, a shrink, and they'll immediately talk about their personal problems. You know, my life is this, my kid is that, I have baggage from daddy, you know what I mean? Um, but I don't know, do they, would, would they, I mean, do they, they, I would talk to my business partner about my business problems, but um, he might be the problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> but um and then we have for example uh lauren her business partner is her husband so that adds a n oh, whole sorry. new layer yeah. right so how does that like i mean we really i think and, and, and how would somebody let's say cause they said i let's say i wanted to contact you and all i wanted to do was bitch about my business all day to you as my therapist mm -hmm. how would we contact you um I could be found on, well, if you Google my name, you can find me. I have a website. I'm on Instagram. I'm not that active on Instagram. Um, but yeah, it's uh, depcoct.com. has all my contact info on there. Um, and yeah, and would, would you take a client that just oh, yeah. was like all about like, uh, my, my, hey, my personal life is great. It's rainbows and unicorns. You know what I mean? Um, but my business life is going to kill me. Yeah. You know, would you talk to them? Oh, of course. And I have people come to me for all sorts of reasons. I have um, business business people who will come and nothing is wrong, but they want to just optimize. Oh, their okay. Self. So, and I think that's a big misconception too. Only going to therapy if things are really bad, God, right? Because I often hear people say, "Well, like, it's not that bad." Well, they don't have to be bad at all. You could just be looking to how do I get to that next level? Hmm. Um, you know what? What's distracting me from getting to the next level? What are my stuck points? What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? Um, so that's an important thing to consider too. And I think that speaks to the proactive nature of yeah. catering to your mental health. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know what? That's true. Uh, I, mean, I mean, we try to be as business owners as proactive as possible, but yeah, that's definitely another, but you don't have to have bad things happening. Yeah. Okay. So, um, 
what kind of advice could you give uh, for, let's say, uh, somebody who's just starting out their business? Because we, we were talking, I'm, I've been sort of talking in the vein of people who've maybe been around a little bit a while, mental health, because we all go nuts after a while as business owners. But let's say the person that's just starting out, um, you know, who maybe isn't necessarily, and there's actually a couple questions I have here for that one in general. Uh, they're not starting out, they, they, maybe they're just, they, they're not even, again, you got some 20 something year old person, my, probably not even thinking about their mental health. They're mm -hmm. just thinking about, I'm gonna make my Millie. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Um, what kind of advice can you give a young person just starting their business out so that they don't end up in burnout or hitting that wall so hard? Yeah, you know? I would say, just like in business, you always have a strategy right and a game plan and I think having that game plan for yourself is equally important and you know I'm a shoot for the moon land amongst the stars kind of person so obviously you know you're not gonna get to ride your bike every single day no. but I'm gonna aim to hit the bike four times a week so have a whole toolbox a game plan of how you're going to manage the stress um, because if you're doing that, that is also part of your business game plan. Mm -hmm. And if you can do that, that's going to put you in a better mental space to optimize your business. Okay. So that's what I would say. Having, having a plan, just like anything else in life. Okay. And then you also mentioned, you know, get that physical exercise, right? Because that's that release. But let's be real. There are people on this planet that aren't about to lift a pillow, let alone lift a weight. Okay, let's just be real here. Yeah. You know, so but but they can't be overlooked in and and they may not choose they may choose not to change the fact that they're not going to do that physical stuff. So yeah. some alternatives to that. What might they need to be doing? Sure. Guided meditations are really good for relaxation. Guided just means that someone's telling you what to do, which is good for me because if I'm just sitting in silence, my brain's going. Right. So when when it comes down to mindfulness and what mindfulness is is just focusing on one thing at a time um, so a lot of the strategies that I teach are good for relaxation but they're also good for maximizing your your business potential right if I could be laser focused at work I'm gonna be better at what I do right. and if I'm listening to a guided meditation and bringing back my brain every time it drifts I'm gonna I'm training my focus so um, guided meditations are helpful. Um, venting is helpful just to uh, verbally unload all of that stress. To so um, go scream at the train. Yeah. <laughs> um, reading, I have found recently, reading is something that I find to be super mindful. I can't think about anything else while I'm reading. Mm. So really diving into that particular concept of what does mindfulness mean for you? What is something that you can do and just be focusing on that one thing and that gives our brain a break from thinking about the 60 other tabs okay. that can be open at the same time during the rest of the day. Yeah. I like the reference, 60 other tabs in our brain. Literally have just referred to our brain as having a browser. <laughs> <laughs> Which circles back to the phone metaphor from earlier too. <laughs> Drains the battery faster. <laughs> and is there anything else that we can um, get that, that I did not ask? Or anybody over here have a question to ask? You know, or thought that we need to add to this for the world to see? talking about a pleasure book. Yes. Reading. So a pleasure book. Yeah, something completely disconnected from, you know, professional. Right. So not not the news, not yeah. a not a how to. Right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So and, and any thoughts, any questions that you have as far as like, you know, going down that mental health rabbit hole in connection with business? We're gonna round table, so I'll give you a few minutes, but yeah, just think about it. So we'll, we'll, this is a good, this will be a good round table topic or whatever we wanna talk about, because I think there's a synergy too between you and uh, Lauren over here. Says, I don't know if you had a chance to talk, um, but uh, you know, she's very much her organization, her company, it's all about the physicality, right? It's oh, all about, and all about cool. the team building and all about the trust building. Yeah. It's great stuff. Oh, awesome. So, um, all right, so I appreciate you coming down. I am going to put you on the spot because I would like to, um, for one of our events that are upcoming, we have one that's in March, but we're also going to have some biz talk events, live biz talk events. I think this topic is something we need to share, and I would hope that I can reach out to you and invite you down to speak. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to. That's great. Okay, fantastic. So, um, 
that's it. We will get uh, all the, everything is going to be on. on uh, we'll, we'll put all the graphics on the screen with all the website and everything. So make sure everything's there so people know how to get in touch with you. But thank you for coming out. Just give it one more time uh, a, a, an email address if you want to give it. Uh, where people can reach you? Or? Sure. Um, email address is info, I-N-F-O, at Depco, D-E-P-K-O-C-T, dot com. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <coughs> so, uh, Jason wants to be part of the round table. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I should go grab him? Yeah, because we're just going to set the, the, the chairs up, reset the camera, and just jump in. I'm, I'm laughing when you're sitting in went focus. Off. So as a teacher, mm -hmm. the craft that I chose to do as, I guess, part of my business is I sell slime. Oh, it's yeah. Tons of kids. <laughs> this, like, this one has uh, lavender in it. Oh, and nice. I have, like, 